<laughs> this is gonna be good. Hello, zany friends, and welcome to another episode of Ride or Abide. And this is where we tell you what we've been into this past week. Uh, if you noticed last week, we posted a very... Yeah, that. Yeah, so we posted a very short video uh, that we put together just because we didn't have a lot of time or a lot of things to talk about last week. But this week, we have some things that we can talk about. It is, uh, at the time of this posting, it'll be the Monday before Thanksgiving. So it's ramping up. Holidays. Do you have your turkey here. yet? They are. Is it defrosting? Have you watched a whole bunch of videos on how to cook it? You should. You really should, unless you're not cooking, in which case, you're set. Like always, we're going to talk about the books that we read this week. Uh, for me, it was kind of a lackluster week when it came to books. I read books. I read a, a few books, but not as many as I would have liked. I still feel like I'm dreadfully behind uh, for my book. So you had how many books this week? Well, I had one that I finished as an audiobook, and then I finished 14 volumes of the comics so I could finally get that done. It was a big week of just, get her done. That's an overachievement, if, <laughs> yeah. if I ever heard one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the book that I finished was The Turn of the Key, which is by Ruth Ware. Um, I gave this one a four star. It was an interesting concept of this woman who's going to be a nanny at a smart home for these children that are kind of quirky. Quirky. The only reason why I didn't give it a four stars is because I found it took a long time to get where it was going because the main character kept on making lots of dumb mistakes. Mm, yes. Which is part of her character, granted, but it also made her difficult to watch. Yeah, I felt like um, when I read this book a year ago, I really enjoyed the book, but... Basically, when I read it, I had not been reading a lot of thrillers at that point. I had been generally young adult chick lit mm -hmm. books. And so when I read that one, I was kind of open to this whole genre of like, oh, what, this is what thriller could be. And now that I've re read a bunch more thrillers, I feel like that one is not as good as I first thought it was. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I'm having like a, a hard time with Ruth Ware. Like, I really like her writing style. But her storyline sometimes just kind of don't do it for me. Um, I don't know. It's just really weird. And I <laughs> don't yeah. know how to explain it, but... And it's also, there's one, uh, one element of realism in this, in that the whole book takes place over, like, five letters, four of which are two pages long. And this is not a short book. No. So this woman wrote a letter that was, like, the rest of the book. True that. Uh, uh that. Just on to what I have read and then we'll go back to your mm -hmm. 14 volumes. But the first book I read this week was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. She actually wrote this one before The Guest List, but it is very similarly written to The Guest List or Guest List is similarly written to this book, mm -hmm. meaning an event that happens in a secluded place uh, from a multiple character point of view and you don't know who is dead until three quarters of the way through the book. So that being said, it is kind of a different thing. It's New Year's Eve. It's up in the mountains. It's this group of people that are like socialites, kind of. I mean, they're like well-to-do people in the business world that have known each other since college and they're significant others. And they're up there with like two caretakers and then like two couples from like the Netherlands. I don't remember where they're from. It's not important. So uh, of course you're trying to figure out who did it. Exactly, and I think uh, I gave it three stars, and my biggest problem with this book is that I just didn't connect with any of the characters. I didn't care. I didn't like them. There were a couple redeeming ones, but uh, I didn't really feel connected to any of them, and therefore I just didn't like the story as much as I liked the guest list. Which you felt much more connected to the characters in. Yeah, for sure. The second book I read, actually listened to this past week, finished, it took me a while to get through it, was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And this book people rave about. Uh, I had mixed feelings about this book, to be honest. Uh, not because of the subject matter, but just kind of the way it was written. So this book follows a the son of the current female president of the United States and the son of the reigning monarch of Britain. 
they hate each other, they are like enemies and whatever, until one night when they decide they're not enemies anymore and they start hooking up. Um, so it is a LGBTQ book. Uh, the sub characters are fantastic. They're really creative. But for me, the middle part was so much about them hooking up and not the plot line that when you get to the end of the book, there's this like little twist that happens. And I'm like, wait, that kind of came out of nowhere. Like, I really wished I had some kind of, you know, clues towards the beginning of the book for this. I feel like in the middle just didn't have anything to do with it. There was like little politicky things peppered mm -hmm. throughout the book, but I don't know. I don't know if it was the narrator and that could have been a big part of it because the narrator to me was just mundane. And so I was just like, whatever. Um, but people love this book. So I might give it a second chance in physical form and see if that does it in a different way for me. But I gave it three stars. The next book, however, is a book that we have shown on this channel before mm -hmm. in an owl crate and it is called horrid and it is by katrina leno i had to do like a little poll in my in the book club i'm in to say which of these books should i read and they chose that one and at first i was like oh man because there's all these other books on the poll that i would have rather read but i finished this book in a day okay it was that kind of book it was fast paced would you say you devoured it i would and that's what's so funny about <laughs> about this book. This girl and her mother goes to live at this house that was owned by her grandmother and uh, it's people say it's haunted. Um, it needs a lot of work. So this girl she has mental issues. When she's having a panic attack she likes to eat books, pages out of books. Now you might think that's really bizarre but I've heard this being a legitimate mental mental disorder that people have had um, on top of which she is now thinking that there are things happening in this house that she can't really explain, including roses growing in the dead of winter and she cannot understand why it's happening. No one will believe her, etc. Um, so it is a very interesting book because of the topic of mental disease. But on top of that, trying to figure out exactly what is happening to her and why. And when you get to the end of the book, this is not a spoiler, but when you get to the end of the book, I have mixed feelings. Does it conclude? Yes. Is it wrapped up? Yes. But the ending to me, I was like, whoa, this is kind of creepy and a little bit like I'm just unsure about what is happening right now. That is the end of it. That being said, I gave it four stars. I thought it was fantastic. It was a great read and one I really did not expect to be as good as it was. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't give it a five mostly because of the off-putting ending. <laughs> <laughs> the last book that I read this week is called Pretending and it is by a woman called Holly Bourne. I actually was approached by the publisher to do like a whole promo book blog thing for them which I did, and they also sent me a copy of the book to review. Pretending is about a woman who has been mistreated in her past life. She currently works at one of those like help crisis helpline places where she answers emails and uh, helps people out who are having questions about sexual health, okay? So for example, you know, women's reproductive issues or mistreatment by a significant other, those kind of things. So the questions can range from run of the mill to traumatic. And she herself is a victim of past trauma when it comes to dating. And every time one of those questions comes in, she starts to have panic attacks and there's this guy in the office that helps her. But she has found in her dating life since this trauma that a lot of the guys she dates are complete jerks. They don't understand why she won't do certain things, why certain things upset her. And if she tries to explain it to him, they act like she's damaged goods and it's all her fault. So she decides to get on a dating app and make up a uh, ideal woman that is in her head. The kind of woman that, you know, every woman thinks that they should be. Fun loving, carefree, very like, casual about everything, doesn't care if the men are stupid or not, she just dates for fun. Okay, so she tries to pretend, hence the name of the book, to be this character 
But I think we all know that even with past trauma, you can pretend all you want. That's not going to really fix the issue. So, as we can see, there are going to be issues wrong. in this book. Um, I felt really bad for her. I felt like mm -hmm. this was kind of a more serious book than it was summarized when I first read the plot. Uh, but I think it was, an, it was a, a very well-intentioned book. I just didn't feel like the writing was very successful um, to merge the almost comedic aspect with the very serious story and topic. So therefore I gave it a three stars, not saying that this book is a bad book, but just that this book could have been written more appropriately. Okay. So that then brings us back to the big huge comic read that I'm finally finished after it's being mentioned in several videos so far. Mm -hmm. I Am a Hero by Kengo Hanazawa is a zombie f story, but it's a lot more. This story starts off with very basic character. He's got his own issues. We've kind of dealt with that before. As the story goes on, though, you get introduced to other groups of survivors, and all of them are surviving in different ways, and so many of them you get really attached to. And I was like, this is just a really good story. And then I reached chapter 165 and went, what am I looking at? as the story starts to ramp up to its final conclusion and it starts to get to what are these zombies why are they here and it gets psychedelic what is humanity and wow but then the ending just didn't get me this ending was sad and it was irresolute and it didn't answer any of my questions it doesn't sound like my kind of book at all you know up until that that one spot you probably could have enjoyed it but after that it just kind of it, it lost me wow. um so i end up giving this book three stars wow. so what was your page count this week well i have three thousand five hundred and sixty six due to the comic I have 1,601. <laughs> what are you currently reading right now? I'm currently going through uh, Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifeweko. I'm also going to be going into Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Yes, which I have read and I said, you should read this book because it's very interesting and I want to get the like, sequel so yeah. I can read it. I am this week currently reading The Cul-de-Sac War by Melissa Ferguson. Um, I have... I am doing this one for review. Uh, I don't have an audiobook picked out yet, so that is the only one I am currently halfway through and liking it so far. So we will see how I how I like the rest of it. There's there's another a book that we both are very very interested mm. in, and I think it's going to be a race to see who actually gets to it. And that's <laughs> Ready Player Two. That is correct. Because <laughs> we love so Ready excited. Player One. <laughs> so excited for this book. I cannot wait. Yes. And holiday movies. <laughs> Let's talk about these. So this week has been kind of like a blast to most loved holiday movies in this house because we kind of got tired of watching Hallmark and Lifetime movies because of the commercials. <laughs> so we were like, maybe not. Uh, so this week we uh, focused on a one new movie and then a bunch of old favorites. So let's talk about the old favorites first. We watched Bad Mom's Christmas on Netflix. I have never seen this before, my husband had. And I, you know what? I remember watching Bad Moms and thinking, what am I watching? Like, this is just stupid and gross. And now I kind of want to go back and watch it again because after watching Bad Mom's Christmas, I think I just wasn't ready for how this movie is uh, because it's a very like crass and like off color. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I think I can now go back and watch the first one and have more of an appreciation for it because I love all the actresses in it. So Bad Mom's Christmas was very fun. Uh, if you don't mind the crass of it all, definitely check it out. It is on Netflix. And then, of course, we watched Love Actually. This is a staple in our house. We have it on DVD. Watch it every year. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, just watch it. It's actually one of my favorite Alan Rickman movies. Yes, it is. And of course, we also have Home Alone, which is another one of his favorite movies. Yeah, and it's the 30th anniversary from it what you're talking about. It is this yeah. year, the 30th anniversary, which yeah. is super crazy. <laughs> super, super crazy. I, I, remember, I think I remember when that movie came out. That's like, <laughs> yeah, I think you do. You were only like, eight. I was like, oh, no, this is a grand movie. This is so much fun. I'm going to booby trap my house. 
I still am. So <laughs> it was really funny. I was reading this article about how it, after the fact, a doctor took a look at all the things that the thieves endured and said, you know what, honestly, after that week, they probably wouldn't have survived because of all of their internal and external injuries, especially to the head. They wouldn't have died there, but like after the fact, they yeah, would have died. died in the hospital. Yeah. Next movie is one of my favorite books and movies uh, of all time, Little Women from 1994. I, I love Winona Ryder. I love Susan Sarandon in this movie. Both of them, whenever I see any other Little Woman adaptation, I will hold those two roles in my head as those two women. I have a very hard time seeing those two roles as anything else. And in the, even in this last time when we were watching it, Susan Sarandon, she plays Marmee. She is so... Like, she talks in this very calm manner, but yet the intensity and the energy that she has underneath is like a master class of acting. But yet her words are so powerful, what she says. It is, I cannot get over how much that character just speaks to me as a mother, I think. And Joe, of course, is like one of my favorites too. And uh, this time in particular, I was watching the movie, think, getting ideas for when I start sewing historical costumes, of which costume in this movie I would actually start to make. So I have some ideas. That's another video, maybe. Maybe. I will tell you that Little Woman uh, is available on Prime Video if you would like to watch it. Next, Family Stone. This is one of my husband's favorite movies. It's available on HBO Max right now. And uh, the reason why it speaks to him so profoundly is because Right before his uh, his dad died of cancer, his dad, his mom, and him went to go see this movie in the theater. And uh, at the time, they didn't know that this movie was about a mother with cancer. Because when you look at the trailer, it's all about this, like, hijinks of this family yeah. Christmas. So they were, like, bawling in the movie theater through the whole thing. So every Christmas when he watches this, it gives him, like, happy feelings that he watched this with his dad before his dad passed from cancer. But... That being said, again, this movie is one of those that could be a Hallmark movie, but the way it's written elevates it to yeah. this, like, other place that's just mind-bogglingly well put together and well acted. The characters you will just fall in love with, the comedy is on point mm -hmm. because it's not cheesy comedy. Yeah. It's rooted in those characters and who they are. Yeah, exactly. And then you get hit with all the sadness and that part that I just can't handle. And it doesn't speak down to you. There nope. isn't a lot of exposition. It just really just dives in and like tells you the story and I love it. Mm -hmm. We have another favorite, You've Got Mail, also on HBO Max right now. Of course, I am a big fan of Tom Hanks. Like, give me Tom Hanks movies all the time. And this is, of course, one of three Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks movies, the first being Joe vs. Volcano, also a favorite of ours, and Sleepless in Seattle, which we'll probably be watching later, but You've Got Mail, we decided to watch because, uh, I don't know, it's just Christmas vibes in New York in the fall. And as my husband says, you know there's certain actors that you see on TV, and every time you see them, or like in a movie, and every time you see them, you're just like, it's like coming home. Mm -hmm. And that's what Tom Hanks is to me, too. I totally agree. So, if you like You've Got Mail, it brings me back to college because it came out when I was in college. And lastly is Meet Me in St. Louis. This is uh, one that my husband just bought for me on DVD, even though it's a favorite every year. I love Judy Garland in this. I love some of the music in this. Not all the music, but some of the music. Uh, the costumes are great. And I actually was reading like a bunch of different fun facts about this movie, and there's so many. Like, I can't can't even really describe how many there are, but the one that actually kind of stood out to me was uh, that it didn't really have to do with the movie, and that's the fact that they had the World's Fair in St. Louis in 1904, but Roosevelt also decided he was going to have the Olympics in 1904, and it was supposed to be in Chicago, but he decided to put it in St. Louis because it would have been easier for people to have something in one place. But it was a disaster because there was too much happening in one place. They mm -hmm. had to spread the Olympics out over like six months. And in some cases, some of the athletes never knew if they won because they died before they told that they won. What? <laughs> I 
fail. <laughs> Major fail. Meet Me in St. Louis, of course, uh, is a great, great classic movie. I think it actually uh, won a lot of awards for what type of movie it was. <sighs> yeah, I just like it. And if you want like old Hollywood Christmas vibes, definitely Meet Me in St. Louis. Yeah. As a late entry to some of the media that we've been intaking lately, I'd also like to bring up that I've been playing a lot of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And if you are interested in seeing any of my footage, please uh, put a comment down below. Let's talk about holidays for this week. Of course we have Thanksgiving is coming up, but let's tell you about some lesser known holidays that you might not know about. What do we got? So on November 23rd, 1963. That's today. Yeah. At 5.15 and 20 seconds p.m., a pair of concerned teachers follow a teenage girl into a phone booth and vanished. This girl was the granddaughter of a time-traveling alien called The Doctor, and pop culture changed forever. Originally intended as an educational show, Doctor Who has grown into a media franchise consisting of 861 episodes, 97 of them missing, a movie, hundreds of books, audiobooks, and, and audio plays. What it doesn't have is an explanation of how the Doctor, who is a member of the sterile Time Lords, has a granddaughter. Yeah, no. I always yeah. wondered that. To put the history of this broadcast into perspective, the reason why it was and 20 seconds is it got delayed because of coverage for the assassination of President Kennedy. Yes. Mm -hmm. You were shocked about how long, how many episodes it was? Yeah. I forgot about the missing ones. Yeah. Yeah. Star Trek has 767 episodes so far. That's also including the animated series. Mm -hmm. So it's longer than Star Trek. But what it's not longer than is the Japanese series we know in America as Power Rangers. In Japan, <laughs> it's called Super Sentai, and it's made of 2,135 episodes. People love those in Power Rangers, man. So obviously the pop culture tie-in for this one is a Doctor Who. A comment below if you watch Doctor Who and who your favorite Doctor is because I would love mm -hmm. to know. I'm between the 10th and the 13th. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. On November 27th, we think about droves of self-interested people bursting in on private property to get as much as they can, no matter the cost, to others. And from legislation signed by President George W. Bush, it's also Native American Heritage Day. And if you don't see the problem here, I need better graphics. <laughs> the First Nations of America actually have an entire month, all of November. And for the most part, we ignore it. Uh, this month is devoted to learning about the heritage of the indigenous tribes that are currently still living on the lands mm -hmm. and uh, their cultures and the history that we made them go through. This November 27th, uh, after Thanksgiving is all done, take a moment and really consider how modern events are impacting them. Um, back in 2016, we had a huge drilling problem, a pipeline coming through Native American lands, mm. and their pleas were completely unheard. And it's things like that. We continue to impact the lives of these nations mm -hmm. um, that are still sovereign nations, and we just kind of ignore them, like they're not even there. Um, and for that reason, they actually call Thanksgiving the Day of Mourning. So usually Native American Heritage Day does fall on Black Friday. So mm -hmm. it's a rotating holiday. And then this year, of course, it lands on the 27th. Uh, as far as a pop cultural reference, I want to give you two. So the first one is the first one that I encountered in my life, which is Dances with Wolves with Kevin Costner. I watched this movie in the theater probably seven times. It is about the Sioux Indians. Um, more more closely if you want to tie in it to the Sioux Indians but it really opened my eyes to some of the things that the Native Americans did go through and how uh you know the buffalo was really important to their way of life so going even further into that is a mini series that we have seen on TV we I think we have the DVDs of it somewhere we ended up buying it because it was so important and so powerful it's called Into the West and it is a mini series that depicts over a long period of time the plight of the Native American and what they have to deal with, especially with uh, the government and 
fact that they took the children to uh, away from the parents to mm -hmm. go to English schools changed their culture basically yep. uh there was a bunch about the the gold rush and that whole time period it is it is a really interesting story if you can get your hands on it rent it whatever i highly recommend this mini, mini series because not only is it just an interesting watch because of the way that it's filmed and all the actors in it are great but also because of the story if your heart doesn't break or some of the things that happened to these people, yeah. I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> but it is, it's touching and poignant, and I think that if you would like more information about things that happen, this is a really good reference uh -huh. point for you to watch. <sighs> okay, so something a little bit more lighthearted. We have <laughs> the 29th, Western Christianity begins its season of Advent, which comes from the Latin word Adventus, meaning the arrival. It's been seen around 480 AD. That's about when we last had record of it. Um, and it was a season of fasting for the monks in anticipation of the second coming of Jesus of Nazareth. And since then, that's been kind of replaced with more of uh, Christmas is coming mm -hmm. kind of feel. Uh, in our household, we actually celebrate it using an Advent wreath which was invented by Pastor Johann Wichern in 1839 to help children keep track of the days until Christmas. Because they were all like, hey, when's Christmas gonna be? Did we miss it? And he's like, no. here, I'm gonna light a candle for you every night until the time comes. And every Sunday got a larger candle. And ever since then, they kind of got rid of the little candles and you just have one big candle every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So as far as uh, you, the viewer watching, may not be religious, this is kind of a religious background holiday, but it doesn't have to be. And I, when I was doing a little bit of research on there, it was basically saying, you know, this is a season of hopeful anticipation. And here in 2020, I cannot think of another reason to celebrate Advent, even if you're doing your Advent calendars, that totally works too. But the fact that we need some hopeful anticipation happening in our lives right now, I think you all know what I mean. Uh, so, in this case, I couldn't really find a lot of pop culture tie-ins for Advent when it comes to the Advent itself and not in a, a calendar, which I think I could find very many Advent calendar movies like Holiday Calendar and Christmas Calendar. But what I decided instead was to uh, give you a pop culture reference that is a hopeful anticipation of something that I have been looking forward to for almost a year. I was going to watch it for my anniversary in June, and then it got pushed to October, at which point I was like, heck yes, let's watch it for my birthday. And then it got pushed to December 25th. And here we are, the biggest present of all. They're now gonna show it not only in the theaters, but also on HBO Max, so I can watch it in my living room. Yes, it is Wonder Woman 1984. Hello, helpful anticipation. Yes. Let's talk about some lifestyle items that we have been loving this week uh, before we get too much longer. So a lot of you know I am going through the curly girl method right now. I tracked it and I'm now three months in and uh, a lot of people say it takes like six months to a year to really see good results. This is me with no stylers in my hair, FYI, because I'm going to dye my hair later, which is not curly girl method, but I don't really care. So I found this towel. A lot of people say you should wrap or plop your hair in a t-shirt, which I have been. I also have microfiber uh, turby wraps. I don't like them as much because the little hooks seem to get caught on my hair. I found this hair towel on Amazon. It is made of a gray uh, t-shirt material, has a little uh, rubber elastic on the end here and a button on the front. It's used like almost exactly like a turby towel would um but it's made of that t-shirt material and i love it i paid six dollars for it it is so cheap would make an amazing stocking stuffer if you're looking for a hair towel i definitely recommend this one it's by evolve and i will leave the link down below for you to purchase it is great so out of the things that we've been getting from trader joe's there's one thing that has shown up and we've been waiting for it all year 
stuffing chips. Every time they go to Trader Joe's in the month of October, November, I'm like, if you see them, get like two bags. Because <laughs> then we, la we make it last mm -hmm. over like months, like two months. Yeah, so we got there and we got two bags for me and two bags for her and that's going to be all that there is. Yeah. We went one time. They're already out. Yeah, no. This stuff is the bomb. <laughs> you need to have some. Oh, wait, you can't. Well, oh, they man. might. Maybe their store will get more. You never know. Especially if you're in California, they get first picks. They do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Trader Joe's stuffing chips taste like Thanksgiving dinner in your mouth. <laughs> Without the cranberries. With a crunch? No cranberries. That is true. Although if you were to dip this in cranberry relish, oh mm. crap, I'm going to have to save these chips for when we have cranberry relish. My second lifestyle item is this mug that my husband got me from Starbucks. When he showed this to me, I was like, oh my gosh, honey, you know me so well. I don't generally gravitate towards red things. Red is his favorite color, not mine. But what I love about this mug is that number one, there is no handle. It looks like a jar, which I think is so cute. And then the uh, green minty lid on the top just gives it this pop of festivity. I don't know, I'm going to love, love drinking my morning tea in this. So much so. I also downstairs, and I'll try to post it on Instagram, have a Starbucks cup tree. Uh, every year I get one like Starbucks ornament, the little bitty ones, and I decorate this tree with it. Uh, a couple years ago I did swaps, so I have a couple from like Arizona and Ohio from people there who have sent me some. Um, but I also have one from the Disney park. So I like to, if I can find them, I like to collect them for this tree. I also got one of those for this year as well. And uh, I super, I just super love it. I just think it's so cute. Mm -hmm. I know like a lot of people are like, Starbucks cups, really? <laughs> but then but there's know. also people that are like, Starbucks cups. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own passion. So speaking of coffee, just today we uh, you know, we went to go get some breakfast, got, went to Wawa, and they have a new drink there called Cinnamon French Toast. Oh. Um, and you can get it in pretty much every format. You can get it as a hot drink, you can get it as a frappuccino, you can get it as iced coffee, and you can get it as just that stuff and in milk. So yeah. It's very tasty. We got it in the Frappuccino format, um, and I would totally show it off to you, but uh, I already finished it. <laughs> I have like this much left on mine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very cinnamony goodness. This, it tastes like a cappuccino version of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, there is definitely that coffee taste, and they sprinkle cinnamon across the top too, so. Mm -hmm. Word to the wise, when you get down to your whipped cream section of it, it might be very cinnamony. <laughs> it hasn't already mm -hmm. distributed itself into the cup. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, if you have a Wawa in your area, and by now they're, they're popping all up the all place. over the place, yeah. uh, do that. But I also would like to, and maybe I will show this off in a, in a different video, uh, recommend their uh, caramel hot chocolate. It's amazing. I haven't had it yet. We're gonna we're gonna do that this year. Yeah, I think it might be yeah. a, you might see that in a future video. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're bringing you peace, hope, love, and I hope a lot of fun this holiday season. Uh, but until next time, stay zany. Bye.